the idea is that we're just trying to make the most beautiful phrase possible. So there are many different ways to do it. Uh, and I guess the end of this... Uh, hey everybody, so this is my first video I am doing with Riley. Everyone say hello to Riley. I know I have to do a, a video introducing my basses, and maybe by this point I would have already done that, but no, it's on the docket. I will do that. This is Riley. Uh, Riley is a little smaller than Norma, and so I use Riley mainly for my solo playing, which is great. And I am about to do a Belted Out Basses Instagram post, and I want to tell you a little bit about Belted Out Basses and how I came up with that concept, because I know some of you have been wondering, where did Belted Out Basses come from? So when I was younger, I fell in love with music because I loved the sound. Well, I fell in love with music for a lot of reasons. <laughs> but string playing, I fell in love with strings before I even knew what strings were, to be honest. I, and even the bass, that's a longer story. Um, there, yeah, it's a longer story about how I got, ended up playing the bass. Because my siblings play string instruments. My older brother plays violin. Played violin. <laughs> Sister played cello. And I, I picked up the bass. But I was always captivated by the sound of strings because there's something about the warmth when you get a group of string players playing together and that sound, I just thought it was magical. And so, so that's one. Two, one of my uh, idols when I was young was, I mean, I'm sure everyone's idol, <laughs> Yo-Yo Ma. And I, there was a recording and it's still one of my favorite recordings today of Yo-Yo Ma playing the Rachmaninoff cello sonata and Prokofiev cello sonata with Emmanuel Axe, which is a great, it's a great recording. It's just a fantastic piece. As a matter of fact, it was that recording that inspired me to play the third movement of the Rachmaninoff, Rachmaninoff cello sonata for my audition for Curtis. So that was maybe a little strange, <laughs> uh, particularly I, uh, back then pulling from uh, other rep to um, uh, play an audition. But I love the piece so much and it was so beautiful. And what's funny about this, I came from a smaller town and I didn't know what was weird or strange or possible on the instrument. I just did it because I wanted to do it and I thought it sounded great. And that's, as a quick aside, that's really neat to see how bass playing is progressing today. Because with technology and people seeing what other people are doing, people are inspired to do different things. And it's taken bass playing to a whole new level, which is really, really cool to see. To take it back to belted out basses, <laughs> the sound of Yo-Yo Ma to me was so, or is so, I mean his playing, is that I was so captivating. And to put that together in a group of, of full strings, to me it just really was, it's like really magic, like a magic trick, like rabbit out of a hat, <laughs> bow, bow to string, and then you get that kind of magic. I just really, really found it incredible. And I, it's, I remember even my very first bass lesson with um, it was David Orshower, uh, the Savannah Symphony Orchestra principal. He was my bass teacher growing up in Savannah. And he, I remember my very first lesson, I learned two scales. It was B flat and F. And I was so excited, y'all. Because my lesson had been delayed because of whatever, scheduling. And we finally had a lesson and it was F and B. And I remember the, one of the very first things I wanted to do was try to like, do vibrato, like move my hand because I knew vibrato was that sound. I was always searching for the sound, y'all. Search for the sound. I can do a whole video on that. I will not do that right now. But searching for the sound, like what is that quality? Getting that voice, that richness, that soul that goes beyond. It's, it's, like, it's almost a little bit beyond technique because how you use it helps create what that sound is. So I, anyway, I, I've been just captivated and mesmerized by that ability for musicians to do that with their instruments. And um, I wanted to do it with the bass, like right out the gate. So even when I was younger, I was, my sister played cello, so I was trying to play her cello music. I would take her, like steal her cello music and I would practice and um, just, even if it, I probably sounded like crap, but I didn't care. I did it anyway, because I just wanted to learn and wanted to do it. And I did the rock Rachmaninoff cello sonata again, I, cause just because I wanted to, like why not? I just wanted to play it. And then, uh, when, I was at, uh, um, when I was in high school, as I continued to do this, I was doing it for church hymns. And I, I grew up in Savannah, Georgia, and I grew up in uh, the traditional Baptist black church in the South. <laughs> and uh, we had a really, really supportive minister, um, Reverend Vinnie R. Mitchell, who really loved musicians to be playing. 
as part of the, particularly young people, he was very encouraging of young people playing instruments in the church because he, he actually always talked about like having an orchestra and, and wouldn't have an orchestra um, as, as part of the, the worship service. So even, I used to play piano for Sunday school every, every Sunday, but every once in a while I would play, play my bass and I would try to play melodies. Oh, there's so many great church hymns. I mean, it worked for Bach. I mean, uh, <laughs> and what's funny about that is I wasn't intentionally doing it in that way, but it's really true. I mean, uh, Bach played in the church and wrote um, the, those fantastic um, the chorales uh, by harmonizing the traditional church hymns. And I, for me, I use the church as far as music making by hearing it. I grew up with gospel music, but then wanting to play these tunes on my instrument and wanting to emote in that way. So that, um, that went on through college. When I was uh, in college, I attended a church where it was so exciting. I, every Sunday, I would just get there with my bass, and the, um, the pianist would allow me to, organist, he would allow me to just walk in, and we'll just pick a hymn, and I would just play something, and then I would play it for like the offering. And while it was a little terrifying, it had me belting it out all the time, looking for ways to play melody, looking and getting the opportunity. Because as bass players, we don't get to play melody very often. And that's the whole point of this. We, and because of that, it can sometimes limit how we approach music in a lot of ways. Because we might have a very kind of structured, oh, well, I've played this music in this way for um, this piece for orchestra. And un, un, for worse, bass parts, I think they've gotten better. But like 25 years ago, bass parts for like, Middle school for uh, for or introductory beginning level, we're always like, <laughs> like, I mean, it, not the most inspirational. <laughs> uh, while the violins were always playing the melody, and, and that way, the music was discriminatory <laughs> against what the instruments could do. So to give the basses the melody uh, uh, more often, I think will help do that. And, 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 and that's the way music was, honestly. I mean, even if you look at, at, at the history of classical music, the bass parts didn't get more, they got more interesting with time and had more featured roles. When you get into romantic music where things are led by the bass and to go so far as even having a bass solo written by Mahler as part of the, the standard rep, the basses have come a long way. So I've been belting it out a long time. And the reason I started to belt it out Bases hashtag was I just wanted other bass players to feel comfortable doing the same thing. Just like we, there are no limits to what our instrument can do. Yes, we're really big, but we can be just as soulful, just as beautiful, just as lyrical as our long, uh, or as our smaller. <laughs> we can be just as beautiful uh, as our smaller counterparts. Um, and that's something I always wanted to do. So. I started the hashtag and it's morphed a little bit because now it's just about belt, bass players kind of belting out anything, uh, having a safe space to make music with each other and share different posts and that kind of thing. And I'm so excited that it's caught on because there are over a thousand posts, nice job y'all, a thousand posts for a uh, belted out basses, which is great. Um, so keep belting out y'all and, and look for these, these, these reasons to play melody. Having an understanding of melody and how melody, like, even how, how you would breathe with it, how you play, and what, I can talk about my breathing another time because I know people have a lot of questions about my breathing while I play. <laughs> Not breathing in general because that's how I stay alive. But, <laughs> uh, uh, but breathing while I play. If you can get a real sense of that, when you are accompanying, which is what we do as bass players a lot, you can have a stronger sense of where to place things with someone else. Uh, and that goes everything from like playing chamber music to playing an orchestra. Like I, I know, uh, cause some people are like, where do you put the pizzicato? You put the pizzicato where it's supposed to go. That's where you put the pizzicato. Like you should, the bottom of the stick, it matters what you're playing. If you're playing um, a Mahler Adagietto, uh, I think, the, how is it? Uh, yes, yeah, so you have this da 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 da. We have a pitz. If anyone who's played, played this, it's one of the scariest pitches to play, to be honest, because it is hard to know exactly where to do it. Worse, you have eight bass players or seven other bass players, if you're in a full symphony orchestra, to do it with. But if you don't have a sense of that line, 
the, you'll know. And it's almost like some kind of like spirit is speaking to all of us, but you know, and we all know exactly where to put it. So that can come from just listening to melody, but I think it also comes from playing the melody a lot and having a sense of what that breath and what that feel could be like. Of course, the conductor's up there, but they can't, con they, I mean, conductors control a lot, but they can't control every single nuance, and we actually have to do that as members of the orchestra. So that, I just wanted to give that, that little talk about belted out basses, and I hope uh, you join the belted out basses <laughs> um, uh, hashtag and the hashtag family. You can just, it could be, again, a melody. And the thing is, I play melodies that generally aren't played on the bass. I'll, I'll steal a melody from, I have done, I just did a viola solo recently. <laughs> uh, I, took, I did a viola soli uh, from Daphnis and Chloe. I've done that. Uh, I played, oh, once I did the, um, uh, the English horn solo from Dvorak 9, because it's just really beautiful. I played opera. I've done opera arias as belted out. So you can really belt anything out. <laughs> uh, it's a great opportunity. And now I'm going to do something a little strange. And this is a play something from a Broadway show, which I don't think I've done on my channel yet. The reason I know this melody is because when I was young, we used to have the VHS. You know, VHS is we. But so back when I was young, we had these little tape players, like v VCRs, and you had to put the tape. It was like this big and had little things that round and had film in it. <laughs> and you had to put it into a machine. And you had, one of the, the tapes that we had was of the musical Annie. And it's one of my earliest memories because I don't know my mom taped it and then would play it for us. And it, those songs are very much in my head. But there's this one so song, Maybe, which I, uh, I um, thought was really beautiful, just the tune. And I thought I would do it for my belted out basses. And it, it has this... So even playing this, I'm trying to figure out which, which finger I'm going to use. I could play it close. I could do open. How to taper and how you're gonna, where's like, how's this note gonna go into the, and how's that, this note relate to the, the goal note? So, like, and, you, and even like that little hesitation, I hold it and then a little momentum. Because that almost acts like an appoggiatura. So, there's like this little spin over the C. Almost like it's a suspension. It's not a suppository. It acts like a suspension. <laughs> uh, over the top and then it resolves down. Um, yeah, so, I mean, there's so many different things you could do. I mean, I, I, mean, I test out vibrato, particularly uh, like the... than going okay, so keep that same color across the string but and there's so much that can be talked about but even because I could play it differently I, I, I to me this is a little more broad almost Mahler-esque as far as the, the way the breath of the, the melody. So, I, I, you won't see me like do this. For me, it's just, the, it's not appropriate. Now, I will tell you, there are some, particularly some old school violin players. It's very cool. They would have this consistent, kind of zingy vibrato. So 
hard for me to do. It was really, really, actually really, really nice and attractive. There is, there are lots of ways, there are many ways to peel a cucumber. And for those of you who follow me, you will know where that's coming from. But there are many ways to, to peel uh, or ski, skin uh, a cucumber. And um, uh, the idea is that we're just trying to make the most beautiful phrase possible. So there are many different ways to do it. Uh, and I guess the end of this... Uh, <laughs> Like how even how to how to end the note, and I in that that's again fourths are no fun on the bass. It's like fifths on the other instrument, on string instruments. But and it, how, what is it? Particularly if you know the words, because then you how do the words fit in, in into um, um, how I'm gonna make this. I think, I wish I, I wish I could explain this in words. It's actually very difficult. <laughs> but I take the time and then I'm trying to get that as smooth as possible. Yeah, so I'm gonna make a video on this. And that's a little bit about bell tile basses, and that's the tune I'm gonna play tonight. And um I hope you feel inspired <laughs> to uh, belt it out every once in a while. Don't be afraid of the melody. Take it and own it um, like it was written for your instrument anyway. Uh, and I think it'll help with your, your musicianship as you continue to grow in your, this wonderful journey of being a musician where we never learn everything. We don't, we don't. That's what's so, uh, so great about being a musician is that we don't know everything and that there's always room to discover and, and experience and experiment and do things differently and see things from a different angle. And it might change over time. And that's just one of the great things about music. So belt it out. I wanna see your videos out there in the world. 